we can see that it maneuvers in ways that uh, rocks do not. We can see some artificial lights coming from it, or we can detect a radio signal from it. Uh, you know, there are all kinds of ways by which you, you realize something is technological. We haven't seen that yet. Something extraordinary has just happened with 3i Atlas. After months of mysterious behavior that strained every standard model of small body dynamics, the most puzzling interstellar visitor on record has finally yielded the clue observers have been chasing since first detection. Clear, repeatable evidence of non-gravitational acceleration measured across independent pipelines. This is not a dramatic blur in a viral clip or a single outlier data point. It's a consistent, cross-checked signature. On October 27, 2025, sequences from NASA's Punch Constellation bracketed a series of micro-deviations in Atlas's motion that cannot be reconciled with gravity alone. In practical terms, the measured effect is exquisitely small, on the order of a hair's width of extra speed per hour at highway velocity. But in celestial mechanics, tiny residuals are everything. They either vanish with better calibration or they persist. This one persisted, and once it persists across instruments, wavelengths, and reduction methods, the conversation changes from glitch to cause. What followed forced a methodical escalation. Navigation analysts ingested the punch astrometry with timestamp precision, then ran it through separate orbit solvers with different assumptions about solar radiation pressure, thermal recoil, and canonical outgassing terms. Each solver shaved the residuals in a different way. None erased them. The best fit still required a non-gravitational term, an extra directed push. The uncomfortable part is what came next. Just before perihelion, Atlas brightened at a rate no classical comet obeys, scaling roughly with heliocentric distance to the power of negative 7.5. That slope is a red flag by itself. We've never documented a brightness law that aggressive in any well-characterized comet of the inner system. Paired with the acceleration, it stops looking like a photographic curiosity and starts looking like a behavior pattern. And the pattern is now repeatable. Months earlier, during the approach to Mars, observers logged a synchronized surge in luminosity followed by a clean return to baseline. Same choreography, different geometry. Once is curiosity, twice is protocol. You don't need sensational language to say that. The measured curves say it for you. Two distinct windows, two climbs in flux, two clean decays, each aligned to dynamical milestones where a controlled system would logically adjust planetary encounter and perihelion. Meanwhile, the negative evidence has been just as loud. Throughout this run-up, teams kept searching for the messy signatures that make comets comets, dust coma, gas bands, asymmetric jets, spectrographs returned spectra that were maddeningly quiet, no dominant water band, no familiar CN emissions, no obvious CO2 features at the levels you'd expect if outgassing were the driver behind the acceleration. Polarimetric measurements push the weirdness further. Strong negative polarization in scattering angles where comets reliably show the opposite sign. That's not a headline. It's a lab-testable optical property, and Atlas is on the wrong side of it. Add the anti-tail episode, material apparently collimated toward the sun in July and August before flipping into a more canonical tail near perihelion, and you have a tapestry of anomalies that do not cancel one another out. They rhyme. Because credibility lives or dies on reduction and replication, the community did what it should do. It tried to make the signal go away with better data handling. The punch astrometry was re-reduced with independent plate solutions. Heliocentric distance corrections were recomputed. Phase angle effects and forward scattering boosts were explicitly included. Photometric zero points were re-anchored against multiple catalogs. The residual remained. Thermal recoil. Reradiation of absorbed sunlight was modeled with a broad sweep of albedo and emissivity values. Too weak. Then came the brute force tests. Monte Carlo clones over the full covariance of initial conditions, bootstrapping the entire fit to make sure the result wasn't a quirk of one favored solution. Thousands of synthetic atlases later, the same story. Fits improved with a non-grav term, and the direction of that term remained coherent across windows. At the same time, high-phase imaging from Mars orbit gave us the strangest best we have pictures yet. Cassis on TGO and later, 
a tightly scheduled Hubble sequence both produced what, to non-specialists, might look like failure. Faint streaks with brightness modulation. To dynamicists, the modulation was the point. Rotational light curves that don't drift the way normal outgassing should make them drift imply a stabilized spin state, not a free tumble. Comets that heat asymmetrically change their period. Atlas's period, within uncertainties, held steady. A steady rotor with a migrating non-grav term is not a diagnosis, but it is a profile. Composition should have been our easy out. Split the light and read the lines. That's what spectroscopy is for. But where we expected water and common volatiles, we kept finding hints of high nickel signatures in the inner envelope with iron conspicuously underrepresented, then cyanide-bearing compounds in a middle layer, and CoCo2 dominance farther out. In nature, nickel trails iron by abundance in almost every setting we've cataloged. Flipping that ratio is not impossible, but it is unusual. If you then overlay the polarization curve that refuses to match known regoliths or icy dust, the inference is not aliens. It is, this surface and sheath are not behaving like anything in our cometary library. The extreme dryness compounds this. Bulk water fractions nearer a few percent cannot easily support the thrust implied by the trajectory unless some highly efficient, highly collimated mechanism is in play. That's not hand-waving. It's simple bookkeeping. You can't get this much delta V from that little mass without either superb nozzle physics or something sail-like that uses the environment instead of expending itself. This is why the dynamical context matters. Atlas did not wander in from a random angle. It entered within tilde 5 degrees of the ecliptic threaded encounters with Mars, Venus, and a future sweep near Jupiter, and managed to keep Earth-based views worst case right at perihelion. That could be luck. It could also be timing. If you stack the odds, entry near the planetary plane, size-speed mismatch, anti-tail episode, negative polarization, extreme preperihelion brightening, minimal classical outgassing, stabilized rotation, repeated non-grav term, you don't get one weird thing to explain. You get a basket of them. Multiply their independent probabilities and you leave the domain of rare for the domain of vanishingly unlikely. People quote 1 in 10 quadrillion as a heuristic. The exact number is less important than the direction of travel, toward implausibility for purely natural origin. Unless we're sitting on a corner case of nature, we've never seen. Naturally, the most conservative counter is still outgassing, just smarter. Perhaps the volatiles are deeply buried, vent through micronozzles we can't resolve, and align with the spin in a way that yields net thrust without a big coma. That is testable. If that's true, post-perihelion mass loss estimates, dust-to-gas ratios, and the evolution of the light curve should line up with thermophysical models that conserve momentum and energy. If they don't, the conservative hypothesis bends until it breaks. A second conservative line is radiation pressure on an unusually thin, high-area-to-mass object. That was floated for Aumuamua. It returns here because the math works. Thin sheets accelerate under sunlight more than rocks do. If Atlas is thin and big, a sail rather than a sphere, then a non-grav term emerges without propellant. But then you must explain the nickel-heavy inner region, the layered envelope, and the polarization. Each conservative fix inherits debts from the others. Because this is not a movie, the observational cadence is prosaic and relentless. Telescopes book narrow windows. SNR budgets rule everything. The HSD and WSD teams have queued post-perihelion astrometry to chase any widening gap between predicted and actual ephemerides. Ground arrays will try again for thermal IR excess, any hint of waste heat that would turn push into power. Radio facilities will sit on the hydrogen line at 1420 megahertz and nearby protected bands, not because we expect a greeting, but because structured narrowband leakage is how unintentional technology reveals itself. If you want a falsifiable plan, that's it. Track the sky plane separation versus time at milliarc second precision. Compare to gravity only. Publish the residuals with error bars. If a sail or thrust is real, the separation grows faster than your uncertainty envelope. If it doesn't, the anomaly dissolves under better data. Two things have inflamed public imagination more than any plot twist. The reported punch residuals and the directional coincidence with the old wow. 
signal from Sagittarius. It's tempting to stitch them into a narrative. The disciplined response is simpler. Coincidence is cheap in a large sky, but not free. And coincidence plus dynamics plus photometry is a different animal than coincidence alone. This is why the next fortnight of measurements matters more than a thousand thumbnails. If you can parameterize the non-grav term as a function of heliocentric distance and phase angle, and it stays coherent, you don't need a metaphor. You need a new model. Planetary defense folks are treating this soberly. A JPL sentry-style risk page would flag even a remote impactor. Atlas is not one. Still, protocols spin up. International Asteroid Warning Network notifications, minor planet center circulars, rapid releases when they're ready, embargoes when calibration is. The why didn't they publish X yet? Frustration is real. The fair answer is that half-baked astrometry breaks more science than it makes. If an image is withheld because the calibration is dirty or because a mission was paused during a budget event, that is aggravating, not conspiratorial. The right remedy is independent replication. And crucially, we have it. Multiple facilities, multiple teams, multiple pipelines. The object does what the better fits say it does. None of this requires the word alien. It requires humility about our priors. If Atlas is natural, then we've found a class of interstellar debris with properties we have not cataloged. Thin, dry, nickel-skinned, optically odd, dynamically lively. That's a discovery. If it isn't natural, if subtle, repeatable, directed, non-gravitational acceleration persists while classical comet signals remain absent, then we have stumbled into the first credible case of engineered behavior beyond Earth. That's not a conclave, that's a threshold. Either way, the right posture is the same. Measure, publish, let the residuals decide. Right now, Atlas is arcing outward toward Jupiter's neighborhood. The geometry favors a last, clean astrometric baseline before the signal-to-noise falls off. Watch for three numbers in forthcoming releases. The fitted A1A2 non-grav parameters, any post-perihelion change in rotation period to millisecond precision, and the growth of skyplane separation versus the gravity-only ephemeris. If A1A2 remain non-zero across epochs, if the spin holds steady against thermal torques, and if the separation grows superlinearly with your uncertainty bounds, the conservative space of explanation shrinks. Add one more telltale. A narrowband emitter parked near the hydrogen line that repeats in dispersion-corrected time across long baselines. That alone would change the story from dynamics to communication. Until then, this is the most honest sentence anyone can say on camera. 3i Atlas has crossed the line from Odd Rock, to object with measured, repeatable, non-gravitational acceleration and unprecedented optical behavior. The brightness law is extreme. The polarization is anomalous. The composition hints are non-canonical. The dynamics require help. If future data erase the term, we will say so plainly. If they don't, then for the first time in human history, we may be watching technology from somewhere else pass through our sky, quietly, efficiently, indifferently while our instruments, step by careful step, learn how to prove it.